Hi, I'm Edward Andrews and I'm part of the team who conduct worship at St Michael's Parish Church, Dallas, Rufford Parish Church and St Leonard's Parish Church, Forres, Morris, Scotland. I welcome you all wherever you are and whenever you're viewing this video. On 6th of August 1967, at about 10.30 in the morning, I was standing on Tor Ab, looking down at Iona Abbey. It was raining. But my friend Jamie Erskine and I were doing sentry duty to head any casual tourist away from the Abbey, within which a radio broadcast service was taking place. Jamie had a transistor radio, so we were listening to the recently ennobled, the very Reverend Lord MacLeod of Funerary and Morven conducting worship. George MacLeod was about to retire as leader of the Iona community, which he had founded almost 30 years earlier. He had become one of the best known Church of Scotland ministers of his generation. His conduct of worship and his preaching was famous. In the course of his sermon, George mentioned that as well as the 6th of August being the Feast of the Transfiguration, it was also the day on which the atomic bomb had been dropped on Hiroshima. This wasn't the first time that George had raised this question. He had written about this a couple of years earlier in Coracle, the magazine of the community, and we will be exploring the relationship between the transfiguration of our Lord and the transfiguration of the world in Hiroshima. There is one historical point which I will make. I was brought up, as were most of us of my generation, on the idea that the dropping of the bomb in Hiroshima made the Japanese surrender and saved the lives of the prisoners. It didn't. On the 6th of August, the Russians declared war on Japan. Of course, the bomb, doing the work with one bomb, which would previously have taken a thousand bomber raid to do, was horrendous. But for the Japanese High Command, it was the entry of Russia into the war which made them surrender. New York Times military analyst Hansen Baldwin wrote shortly after the war, the enemy in a military sense was in a hopeless strategic position by the time the Potsdam demand for unconditional surrender was made on July 26th. Such then was the situation when we wiped out Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Need we have done it? No one can of course be positive, but the answer is almost certainly negative. However, Hiroshima Day is not about history or about contemporary politics. It's about reviewing the retention and therefore the intention to use them of nuclear weapons in terms of our belief in Christ as the one who was sent and in obeying his demands on his followers. Because of liturgical reform, many churches no longer celebrate the Transfiguration on the 6th of August. It has been moved to the Sunday before Ash Wednesday, which of course is a much more logical place for it, as immediately after the Transfiguration we have Jesus making a prediction of the Passion. It was the opportunity to look at the Transfiguration and to observe Hiroshima Day, which proved irresistible to me. So I'm taking a break from the seasonal lectionary into looking at these two issues, which is why there are two epistle readings. So let us worship God. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. God, who said, Out of darkness the light shall shine, is the same God who made light shine in our hearts to bring us the knowledge of God's glory shining in the face of Christ. So let us worship God. Let us sing hymn 172. 
Sing for God's glory the colours of the dawn of creation. Creativity and light belong to God, let all the earth rejoice. Justice and glory belong to God, let all the earth rejoice. Wisdom and wonder belong to God, let all the earth rejoice. When we get it amazingly wrong, God loves us. When we get it superbly right, God loves us. When we have no idea at all of what is happening, God loves us. When we walk with God, we do not need to be afraid. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Listen to him and walk in his way. Jesus said, stand up and don't be afraid. Listen to him and walk in his way. Jesus said, you are my friends. Listen to him and walk in his way. Jesus said, I'm always with you. Listen to him and walk in his way. Let us pray. Star maker God, you astound us. Transfigured Jesus, you dazzle us. Life-giving spirit, you blow our minds. You are out of this world. You are here in our lives. When we walk with you in wonder, hold our hands. When we walk with you through darkness, hold our hands. When we walk with you in justice, hold our hands. When we walk with you to glory, hold our hands and bring us safely home. Aware of your glory, take us down the mountain with love in our lives. Take us down the mountain to our homes and streets. Take us down the mountain, stand us firm on our feet and walk with us in love. 
creativity and light belong to God, let all the earth rejoice. Justice and glory belong to God, let all the earth rejoice. Wisdom and wonder belong to God, let all the earth rejoice. When we get it amazingly wrong, God loves us. When we get it superbly right, God loves us. When we have no idea at all what is happening, God loves us. When we walk with God, we do not need to be afraid. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Listen to him and walk in his way. Jesus said, stand up and don't be afraid. Listen to him and walk in his way. Jesus said, you are my friends. Listen to him and walk in his way. Jesus said, I am always with you. Listen to him and walk in his way. Amen. Star maker God, you astound us. Configured Jesus, you dazzle us. Life-giving spirit, you blow our minds. You are out of this world. You are here in our lives. When we walk with you in wonder, hold our hands. When we walk with you through darkness, hold our hands. When we walk with you in justice, hold our hands. When we walk with you in glory, hold our hands and bring us safely home. Aware of your glory, take us down the mountain with love in our lives. Take us down the mountain to our homes and streets. Take us down the mountain. Stand us firm on our feet and walk with us in love. O Christ, true image of God, we come drawn by your glory. O Christ, revealer of life in its fullness, we hide fearful of your light of truth. O Christ, lifted up in weakness, we hope in your power for change. Because on this day, years ago, a great flash was seen, not to reveal the divine image, but to incinerate it, in a multitude of God's children, and light has become darkness, God weeps. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Because people are whispering and terror is everywhere, security has become fear, and fear has become death, and what was open is covered up, God weeps. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Because children lie bleeding from great wounds that gape in their throats and sides, in the cities they disappear without trace, as if they had never been, and innocence has become corruption. God weeps. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Because women are beaten, raped and degraded, commodified and trafficked, attacked through their children, and tenderness has become weakness, God weeps. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Because lakes are poisoned and air and forests burn and choke to feed the insatiable appetites of jaded palates, and creation has become destruction, God weeps. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Because weapons are bought and sold in the marketplace as easily as onions, armies mass on borders and killing comes lightly everywhere and peace has become war. God weeps. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Because we cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace in Jerusalem, and life has become death, God weeps. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. O Christ, our true peace, who felt the desolation of death and the fear of abandonment, deliver us who also recognise the shape of desolation and weep, Preserve us from the fear that makes us vicious. Give us insight to see the structures of injustice by which we profit 
and grace to cherish all people in our vulnerability, knowing that we all live within your love. O oh God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith. By the witness of Moses and Elijah, you foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Make us with Christ, heirs of your glory, and bring us to enjoy its fullness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Listen for the word of God. First of all, it's contained in the book of the prophet Daniel, chapter 7, verses 9 and 10 and 13 and 14. As I looked, thrones were set in place and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. And at verse 13 and 14, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is from everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Again, listen for the word of God, this time as it's contained in the second letter of Peter, chapter 1, reading from verse 16 to verse 17, uh, 19. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories which we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses to his majesty. He received honour and glory from God the Father, when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with them on the sacred mountain. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. And in the letter of James, chapter 3, verses 17 to 18. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in deep peace reap a harvest of righteousness. The psalm is Psalm 97. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. As lightnings light up the world, the earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the peoples see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. 
He preserves the lives of his saints. And delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Let us pray. All creation was astonished at your appearance, O Christ, for in your presence no one living can be justified. Yet you have redeemed us and we rejoice in your salvation. Grant that your righteousness may illumine our hearts to the glory of your name. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel is contained in the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 9, reading from verse 2 to verse 10. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't know what to say, they were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and the voice came from the cloud, This is my son whom I love, listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They kept the matter to themselves, discussing what rising from the dead meant. Thanks be to God for the glorious gospel. The transfiguration of Jesus is one of the key events in his life. It's described in all the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke, and is probably referred to in the prologue of John. I've always found it a fascinating story, and I suppose I felt a wee bit cheated when it was put into where it really should be as part of the narrative of Jesus' journey towards the cross, rather than being looked at as an event in its own right. The result is that when the topic is celebrated on the Sunday before Ash Wednesday, the emphasis of discussion has to be verse 9. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. If we're looking at the Transfiguration, however, as an event in its own right, we discover that there are a number of sections, subplots, which make up the whole story. There's the people involved. There are Peter, James and John. That ties in with the epistle reading from Second Peter. Then there was the actual transfiguration, which ties us in with the Hebrew Bible reading from the book of Daniel. Then there was the vision of Elijah and Moses with Jesus, which affirms the Jewish roots of Christianity to which we have to be faithful. And then there's the, re the reaction of Peter and finally the voice from heaven. This is my son whom I love, listen to him. Then there's a return to normality, the warning of Christ to keep the event secret until the Son of Man had risen from the dead, and the speculation by the disciples about what rising from the dead meant. 
And of course today we can't look at all these subplots, not in the course of this meditation, and each of them are redolent with theology. But theology is a discussion about what we believe. It is abstract. It seems to me to be a section of the, there seems to me to be a section of the story which we as post lockdown Christians have to look at. It's verse five. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't know what to say. They were so frightened. Dear old Peter opening his mouth and putting his feet in it. Well, all three of the Synoptic Gospels have the configuration, as I said, but only Mark and Luke make any comments about the emotions which Peter was feeling. And it's only Mark who says that they were afraid. Perhaps this is a little personal touch, as tradition has it that Mark was based on Peter's story, told to Mark by Peter himself in Rome. So the disciples were frightened, and Peter, as he felt he had to say something, says, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here. Let's put up these three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For Peter, you see, it was good to have this mystical experience, to be at a place or an event where the boundary between heaven and earth is blurred, at a thin place. It's good. Let's stay here. It's much easier to be having a deep spiritual experience, even if it's scary, than to face up to the mundane reality of the hard life. This might say something to us. At the time of COVID, not everyone was fretting about getting out, getting back to the nightclub or to church. Perhaps we have been comfortable, even if at times we have been frustrated by not being able to meet people. Even when we do not have COVID as an issue, it's a temptation to cling to the great experiences of the faith rather than going out into the hard world where we're confronted with the reality of life, whether we're aware of sin and suffering confronted by the exploitation and poverty. So like Peter, we can want to keep hold of the shining experience of Christ and the, and the ground. Moses, the lawgiver, and Elijah, the prophet, the forerunner of the Messiah in a way that we can be seen to be doing something, almost controlling them. But the vision fades. We come down the mountain. We no longer can be shielded from whatever the threat of disease or the reality of life in the hard world, the world which Jesus came to improve, which is one of the meanings of to redeem. It's where we're called to bring in the kingdom. The problem is we have to understand that the kingdom isn't a partial thing. It has to cover all of life. It's this which brings us to the second festival which we're observing today, Hiroshima Day. It was the day that the world was changed, transformed. But rather than spend our time on historic questions, we have looked at them briefly in the introduction. Or political questions about the possession, retention and the willingness to use nuclear weapons. What we're doing, what we're looking at, is a spiritual question. At the centre of what Christians believe is that God took upon himself human form, that the divine became incarnated into humanity and was both. Thus, we have matter, the physical becoming God. In the Hiroshima explosion, as George MacLeod said, we took his body and we took his blood and we enacted a cosmic Golgotha. We took the key to love and we used it for death and destruction. 
This is the kind of reverse transfiguration, almost turning upside down the biblical account of the experience of Peter, James and John, encountering God's glory revealed in the transfigured Jesus on the mountaintop. But it forces us to encounter the stark, down-to-earth reality of nuclear weapons in the here and now. The story of the Transfiguration may seem mysterious and rather abstract, even nebulous, shot through with a wonderful shining power. But we're reminded that the Hiroshima bomb was perceived as being brighter than a thousand suns, and today its potential has been increased by a magnitude of many. And yet, I could rehearse the political, military and economic arguments against the possession of nuclear weapons, which perhaps would turn into a discussion of the replacement of Trident weapons system, or we look at the Transfiguration and Hiroshima Day. It's this which brings us back to Christ, who experienced his clothes becoming dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. The spiritual and the material became one and veiled between heaven and earth, and the cosmos of time is destroyed. It's out of this that the people of God discover that they're being led into a new relationship with reality and that in that relationship we have to challenge the distortion of matter in nuclear weapons. On the Feast of Transfiguration and on this Hiroshima day, we look at the reality of Christ and, the, and commemorate the victims of not only the two times that atomic bombs were used in anger, but also the people who died from the casual byproducts of nuclear tests, or even the development of nuclear power, which, remember, was developed to produce uranium for the bomb. So as the people of God, we seek to remember the light and the power in Christ and the questions of how we use the matter of which Christ is made. And to him be the glory. The hymn is 353, Bright the Cloud and Bright the Glory.
Let us respond to the promises and demands of the gospel in a reflection. Believe that God is present in the darkness before dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty where fear and courage join hands, conflict and caring link arms, and the sun rises over barbed wire. Believe in a with us God who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. A firm of faith that takes us beyond the safe place into action, into vulnerability and into the streets. Commit ourselves to work for change and put ourselves on the line. To bear responsibility, take risks, live powerfully and face humiliation, to stand with those of the edge. To choose life and to be used by the Spirit for God's new community of hope, ever-changing God, sometimes we plod on, head down, watching our feet and missing the glimpse of glory. So let us pray. Ever-changing God, breaking through into the mundane greyness of our lives to make all things new. Lift up our eyes to see your glory in the taken-for-granted intimacy of human loving, in the persistent courage of day-to-day -day struggle, in the renewal of green growth after winter, in the new insight that stretches our imagination. Lift up our eyes to see the wonder and mystery of your presence beckoning through the everyday glimpses of grace. God of the ordinary, we praise you you take the drabness of our thoughts and brighten them into vivid imagination. You take our everyday lives and transform them into holy, precious moments. You take our meagre offerings and multiply them into an abundance of delight. Extraordinary God, you light up our thoughts, our lives, ourselves with the wonder of your call. We praise you. For fullness of life we give thanks, O God, and as we pray for ourselves, we pray for all people made in your image to know life in all its fullness. For the tree of peace has its roots in justice. Lord Jesus, we hold before you the areas where there is tensions which are getting worse. We think of the Yemen where there is a proxy war between Saudi and Iran the innocent suffer and the international community acts as cheerleaders and supplies arms which keeps the war going that the world leadership may repent of their action lord jesus that they may know life in all its fullness we remember the people of Afghanistan with their proud traditions of independence and their suffering as the crossroads of Asia. We commit them to your hand, Lord Jesus, that they may know life in all its fullness. Think of the forgotten civil war in Libya started as a result of European intervention between rival armed coalitions and the Islamic State which contributes to the passage of refugees from Africa to Europe. We hold them before you, Lord Jesus, that they may know life in its fullness. For the tree of peace has its roots in justice. Lord Jesus, may we who love you and find in you our hope, bear witness as Thomas did, that your risen body still carries the marks of the world's violence, injustice and greed. And as we remember, help us to keep faith with all who still today suffer the outrages of violence, injustice and greed. In our actions, in our prayers, in our choices and in our commitment, make us makers of peace and your faithful children. Loving God, whose very being is energy and light and love, too often our lives may seem paralysed into inertia. Being overwhelmed by darkness, bedeviled by hardness of heart, and we're complacent in the corporate sins of society, 
and the failures of governments and political leaders to eradicate injustice and violence and bring about the international harmony and freedom from fear and want that is your purpose for each and every one of us. So we seek forgiveness and we pray for grace that your transforming power may touch our lives, may strengthen all those who strive for justice and seek to make peace that weapons of war may be transformed into instruments of creativity. We ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the closing hymn is hymn 798. The peace of the earth be with you. The peace of the earth be with you, the peace of the heavens too. The peace of the rivers be with you, the peace of the oceans May Jesus, the morning star, rise in your minds. May Jesus, the morning star, rise in your hearts. May Jesus, the morning star, rise in your lives. And may God, the light maker, Jesus, the morning star, and the Holy Spirit of fire and glory, bless you today and every day. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us in this service. May God be with you in the week to come. No matter what happens in COVID and all the other issues that we're worried about. And may God comfort us to his glory. Amen.